The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, my name is Beverly Bolnick at National Mortgage Professional Magazine, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar titled Five High Impact Purchase Business Generators, sponsored by Rowan Wholesale and presented by NMPU. I would like to thank all of our webinar attendees for taking the time out of their busy days for this very valuable and informative webinar in our ongoing series of webinars. Today's webinar will be conducted by Ron Bainberg. First to introduce Ron is a word from our sponsor, Roman Wholesale, and their Director of National Sales, Carl Markman. Thank you very much, Beverly, and thank you all for attending today. Uh, this presentation is actually a result of the, um, the feedback that we've received from our business partners looking for change, looking for different um, ways of producing business with refinances going away and, uh, and other opportunities in front of us. So, we welcome Ron. Thank you very much. Ron's been uh, in the business since 1983. Uh, he's done national trainings and he's a presenter across the country and he does a phenomenal job for all of us. So we appreciate you coming on for the next uh, 35 or 45 minutes or so and uh, take it away, Ron. Thank you very much. Carl, thanks for having me. Beverly, thanks for you know getting this all started. And um, everybody, you, you guys can see my screen, correct? You can see me, see my screen? Yes, everything looks oh, good. Okay, perfect. Well, again, you know, th th thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be doing this presentation today. And you know, what's really, really exciting is that the market has, we, we know the market has changed. Everybody's talking about purchase business, which is what this program is about today. But th there's one little secret I just want to give you first. And the secret is is that everybody's taught, you know everybody's converging on the purchase market, and what I tell my clients and what I tell audiences around the country is, you don't have to worry about your competition. And you might say, well, Ron, that sounds a little bit crazy because there's just so much of it. Honestly, you don't, because if you know what to say, if you know how to say it, and you know how to position yourself you can very easily stand out above the noise or in front of the noise of a lot of the competitions that, that's out there. What we're going to be doing today though is we're going to be going over five different strategies on how you can build more purchase business. But he, here's one of the things, if, if for those of many of you do know who I am, but a lot, of, you know, a good portion of you don't. And my whole focus in how I present and how I teach and coach is I'm very much about relationships. I believe that to succeed at the highest level, you have to be great at developing relationships. And this program today is all about connecting on that level. So I'm going to jump right in. And I'm going to kind of explain, you You know, you see the, the picture of the Parthenon here. And if we move to the next slide is I want you to think about your business as a Parthenon. And let me just get that out of the way, okay. Where you have to look at how, how strong your business is, how many different lead generators you have in working your business. So what we're gonna do is I wanna start off with a quick question. We're gonna do a polling question just to you know, get everybody engaged and enrolled here. And Beverly's gonna get that up on your screen, so I'm gonna ask you to please you know, take, take a moment just to answer. But listen to the question first, okay? It's very important you listen to the question. It says how many methods of consistent lead generation, and you'll notice the word consistent, consistent lead generation do you implement? So I don't want you just counting things that you do here or there or one and done marketing. I'm talking about things that you engage in on a consistent basis. So let's just take a second and have you answer that poll. Bev, Bev tell me when we get up to about 70% of the people responding. Sure, no problem. But you can kind of give me a running, uh, where are we right, now? We're at 63, 65, 66, <laughs> 67, 69, and we're at 70. All right, let's get let's give it ten more seconds, and then we'll just we'll we'll close it out. I've been doing this long enough that no matter how long we wait, we'll never get a hundred percent. Okay, I'm going to close up the poll now. Great, and, we'll, and, and I'm we'll, going to we'll, share the results, we'll the results, everyone. Excellent. 
So 56% um, of our audience said 1 to 2, 40% said 3 to 4, 4% 4 said 5 to 6, and 1% said 7 plus. 7 plus, okay. And those numbers are very, very normal. Um, the 1 to 2 is always the most common. And here's the thing. The, the, there's nothing that I'm giving you at this point that tells you how many you have to have. I'm not telling you that 1 is right, that 3 is right, that 7 is right. I'm not going to tell you which is right because I don't know what's right for you. The most important thing that I wanted to get clear on that question, though, was consistency. These are things that you're constantly doing on a regular basis to grow your business. Now, hopefully what's going to happen is as we go through this program today, you're going to say, hey, you know what, I want to add this or I want to do this. And you'll add one or two more, but you have to be focused on implementing them on a consistent basis. I, I started off the program by talking about, just to, just to be off topic for a second, talking about how you don't have to worry about your competition. Here's why. There are two things that go on with most loan officers, not all, but most loan officers in the mortgage business. One is that they really don't even know how to really jump into the purchase business unless they've already been doing it and really focused and consistently marketing it. And two, many of them engage in what I call one and done marketing. You know, they have a wing it model of success in this business where they go and they tried something. They said, well, I sent an email or I did a mailing or I did whatever or I made a phone call and they didn't get back to me. That's not consistency. That's kind of throwing it out there, hoping and praying that something good happens and that's not going to ever get you successful. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because this is a huge difference maker for you. If you work things consistently and then you just, if you're in that area of one or two and then you add another one or two, imagine how much more your business is going to grow as long as you are consistent. So with that, let's just jump right in. I'm trying to figure out why my calendar, oh, no, there we go. So first thing I want to talk about, again, I'm belly to belly relationship building. This is what I'm about. And we talk, what I'm going to be talking about first of all, and these are in no particular order of these five. These are things that I work with my clients on. I have many clients that are very, very successful in all of these different approaches that I'm going to be teaching you. It's just a question of which one you're going to choose, if you're going to choose any of them, or maybe you're going to even, maybe you're even doing some of these, but you're going to enhance what you're doing now that over what you, what you have been doing. Because maybe you'll get a tip and you say, hey, you know what, I can do this a little bit better. Let's talk about networking. Networking is not when you go to an event and you go to a table that you know people and you're most comfortable there and you pretty much talk about everything but business. That is not networking. That is a waste of time. If you're going to network, you want to do it the right way. And this is one of the things that I also get pushbacks from loan officers. They say, hey, Ron, you know, I go to a realtor event and there are just so many you know, loan officers there. Sometimes there's more loan officers than there are uh, <laughs> realtors. And I say, don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about it if you know how to network better than the majority of the people in that room. It doesn't matter that there are realtors in that room and what, I'm just using an example of realtors. This could be all different types of networking functions, which I'll talk about in a second. But it doesn't matter if they're there and there are people there that they have relationships with. You know, one of the things that I always hear is, you know, Ron, you know, everybody I talk to, every agent or every attorney or whomever I try to develop a relationship with, they say, well, I already have an, you know, I already have an existing relationship. Well, you're going to want to target people that have existing relationships because that means that they already know how to control their business. They already know how to refer, work with you as a referral partner. I can pretty much guarantee you that whomever you are targeting, the person that they're working with, the lender or loan officer that they're working with today is probably not the person they started with in the business. What's happened is they were working with someone Another person came along for whatever reason and they made a shift, they made a change. I'd like to think that that new person won them over, over their previous lender. This is about winning business. This is not about finding people who are not currently doing business with someone. 
So when we go to networking, don't worry that people have existing relationships. You have to go in there in your mind expecting it and say, my job is to win these relationships, not just find the empty voids. And I hope that makes sense. So when we talk about networking, here are some quick strategies. They work incredibly well. And hopefully it's going to stop you from making mistakes that many loan officers do make at networking functions. First of all, if you're going to network, make it part of your schedule. A lot of times what loan officers do, and, I, and I'll keep referencing what a lot of people do wrong, because the majority of loan officers on all of these things that I'm going to be teaching you don't do it correctly, especially the loan officers that have been living in the refi world and they're now jumping into the purchase world. It's a whole new world for them or it's been so long since they've been doing it that the skills have gotten rusty. So if we're talking about networking, make it part of your schedule. So start planning, you know, look at a calendar a month in advance and say, okay, I want to go to, which events do I want to go to? I have some clients that they're at, their whole business is networking. They don't do anything but networking. And what are they doing? They're going to BNI groups, which I know can be a little bit tough because there's a lot of mortgage people buying to get into BNI groups or LITIP. But you can go into realtor events. You can go to um, LITIP, I'm, I'm not LITIP, uh, Lions Club, Kiwanis Club, Chamber of Commerce. It's, I don't want you thinking that networking is just about going where realtors are. Networking is going where professionals are and or just people are that either own homes or could be potential buyers for homes. Also, what I want you to think about networking is it's not just about who you meet at the networking function, whether or not they can refer business to you or do business with you. I want you to think bigger than that. You never know where someone with someone that you meet you will never know who they could end up taking you to. You never know who they might introduce you to. And I've, I've gotten clients from all over the place because someone they introduced me to, even though they weren't in the position to do business with me at the time. So I just want you to think about networking as something much bigger and not just going to an event and finding that one person who's going to do business with you. So if you're going to do networking, make it part of your schedule. Two use the host to guide you to the right people to speak with. What does this mean? If you are new to networking, and even if you're not new to networking, if you're going to a new networking function, very simple strategy. What you do is you go to the person who's hosting the event, so you find out who's running the show. Go up to them, thank them, say, hey, you know, my name is Ron Vainberg, I'm with ABC Mortgage, I really, wa I really want to appreciate you. Somebody's got their mic open. I'm not sure, Bev, is that you or Carl? Okay, not sure. Um, what I was going to say is that you go to the host and you ask the host, you, you introduce yourself and you say, I'm a mortgage professional, I work with ABC Mortgage Company, thank you for having this event, really appreciate it. And then you say to them, when you get a moment, I'd like to ask you a question. And they'll say, okay, well, let me finish up with what I'm doing, or they'll say, sure, what's the question? And you say, as a mortgage professional, I am looking to meet here tonight blank. So realtor, attorney, accountant, financial planner, insurance agent, whomever you're targeting, you're asking, you're telling the host who you're looking to meet. And then you ask them, who is a person that I absolutely have to make sure I meet before I leave here? And that host will probably even introduce you to that person. <clears throat> the goal of going into a networking function is not passing out 500 cards. Your goal of a networking function is to connect with two people. Two people, and these are, your, these are the outcomes you're looking for. What you want to do is you want to have a conversation with them, and the secret to networking and moving relationships forward is asking that person about their business. There are two key questions that I'm going to give you right now that have to be part of every networking conversation. You don't ask it like an interrogator. You ask it conversationally. Once you've established that conversation, so if I'm talking with a realtor or if I'm talking with an attorney, I'll say, can I ask you a question? Who is your ideal client? 
That question right off the bat shows, you, shows them that one, you're serious about networking, and two, that you understand the value of helping other people in their business, and it's not just about you getting things. So you're asking them, who is their ideal client? You will be blown away how they're going to really give you specifics as to who they're looking to do business with. That basically then tells you who you should be on the lookout for if you're going to be having a relationship with them. And the second question is, is how can I best generate leads for you? Now, we all know as mortgage professionals that there's a number of ways we can generate leads for realtors or attorneys or accountants or financial planners. There's so many different ways that we can do that in conversations with our borrowers. But when you ask them, the attorney, the accountant, the financial planner, the realtor, how can I best generate leads for you, they may give you a suggestion of something that you haven't thought of. These are two simple questions that set the whole stage for your entire conversation, plus what it does is it invokes the law of reciprocity where they're then going to ask what you do and ask you more questions about your business so then they're taking an interest. This all takes, it takes literally two minutes to do in a networking function, maybe three. It's taking me longer to explain how to do it than it actually takes to do to do it because it's very conversational. But then what happens is, and this is where so many people blow, just blow networking out of the water. They leave and they say, okay, I'll follow up with you next week. You're both going to play phone, actually you're going to play phone tag because they may not even respond to you. So use these words when you're networking. Just ask this question, say, I really want to make sure that we do connect and I want to do everything possible to avoid playing phone tag. What do you think our next step needs to be to make sure we connect? And they might say, well, can give me a call or whatever. I'll say, okay, great. Now what you can do, some people will do this, some people won't. You pull, whoop, hello. You pull this little device out and say, look, you know, I've got my schedule right here. I'd be happy to schedule with you now. Okay. If somebody's serious about networking, they're going to have this with them. Once in a while, someone's going to say, hey, you know what, I don't have my schedule with me or my assistant handles my schedule. Great. What's their name? Is it okay for me to let them know that you said it's okay for me to schedule with you, that I met you here? I don't like playing phone tag. I like, when I'm following up, I want to be able to get that appointment. And if you don't these little things make a huge difference versus you just going to a networking function, you're meeting people, you get business cards, and then nothing ever comes of it. In fact, what happens sometimes is you get business cards and because you've had so many experiences of people not returning your phone calls that you'll make the one and done phone call to them and then you give up. You must leave, must, must leave with your next step in place. If you don't, you're going to waste a lot of time at a networking function. Is there a lot of money to be made at networking? Absolutely. You're going to see how this ties in more to the program later on. What's another way? LinkedIn. Okay. Now, I'm not a Facebook guy. I tell people, you know, I voluntarily tell people that I am not, you know, don't look for me on Facebook. I actually had someone ask me today, can I connect with you on Facebook? I said, no, because I don't use it. I do use LinkedIn, though. And I believe LinkedIn is more powerful for business to business. Business to consumer Facebook is very powerful along with other social media platforms. Business to business though, LinkedIn can be incredibly powerful. But what I want to do is I want to ask you two quick questions. So Val, can you throw up the first question? Okay. First question is, do you use LinkedIn to connect with potential referral partners? So, very simple question, it's a yes or no. Let's just find out how many people are even on LinkedIn and actually deliberately making connections. And there, you know, I use the word consistent on the first poll. On this polling question, I'm using the word deliberately looking to connect with people. How are we doing on the numbers, Val? We are up to 64 already. Okay. 66 now. <laughs> people are yeah. answering this one much faster. Well, the, the yes or no questions are easier. It is much easier to answer, yes. <laughs> okay, we're at 75%. Okay, let's take five more seconds and then we'll close it out. 
you know, one of these times. One of these times, Beverly, I want to make a I want to make a polling question that says, "How many of you will never answer any question that I ever ask?" <laughs> and I bet you got a hundred percent response on that. We just want to make sure they're paying attention. That's all. I know. I know. Uh, what all are right. the numbers? So we have fifty-two percent said yes, and forty-eight percent said no. Could we be more split? <laughs> wow. Okay. That that's actually unusual. Usually, the numbers are closer to seventy thirty. LinkedIn is not hard to use. But let me, let, th this question now is going to go very quickly to the next 50, not the next, the 52 percent that said yes. So just launch that one real quick, Bev. We're not, we're, we're not going to let this one sit here long. This is the question for those of you that said yes, you do connect with LinkedIn. The question is, do you effectively advance, effectively, there's that another big word, effectively advance relationships or do you just make connections? Okay. So that's going a little bit deeper now with LinkedIn. It's not just about connecting with people because connections don't do anything. It's only if you advance them. So I'm curious to see what the numbers are there for that 52%. We know the people that are not LinkedIn, that's fine. Okay. And by the way, don't, don't feel bad if you're not on LinkedIn. Okay. It's not like you have to be. This is just another avenue. The great thing about it, though, is it's free. It's free. And I'm very big on low-cost, no-cost marketing. So what do we got there as far as numbers, Beth? We're at 46 right now. All right. So well, we almost hit all of them. <laughs> we got to hit 52. <laughs> all right. Yeah, let's, let's hit 52. Okay. What, what, what do we got there so far? All right. We're at 52 now. All right. I'm going to close let's it close. out now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And share. Okay. So 38% said only connect. 55% said mostly just connect, sometimes advance, and 7% said advance relationships. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, there are the numbers that LinkedIn is this incredible, powerful tool in the social media universe, and we've got proof here right now that so few people are using it to connect. So let me give you some suggestions that are going to make it easier. And the reason why I included this in this program is because many times what happens is people say, okay, Ron. I've got this person's name or I've got this connection and I don't know what to do. I don't, you know, I don't know what to say or how to say it. So I'm going to give you some strategies here that go beyond LinkedIn. They, they, they go with just generating relationships, period. And what you want to do is you want to properly ex leverage existing connections and you want, if you're going to use LinkedIn, get as many as you possibly can. But here's the thing. Connect with everybody and anybody. Anybody who asks you for a, request, a connection request on LinkedIn, just connect with them. It doesn't hurt you to have more connections. It actually looks better to other viewers when they see that you have 500 or more connections. But part of your business to leverage LinkedIn is research your targets. And targets is not a bad word. Whether it's an insurance agent, an attorney, a financial planner, a realtor, whomever, research them outside of LinkedIn. Google them. Let's see what you can find out about them to help you connect with them on a more personal level. Because when you find something about someone on the outside, then when you find them in LinkedIn or you search for them in LinkedIn, then you can send them a personal message about what you found outside. Don't just be that person that says, hey, Ron Bainberg would like to connect with you. Everybody's going to say yes or most people will say yes. I think I've had two people reject my connections in, in, in my past, and those were people that I just had sent general connections, but we're not advancing anything. All we're doing is connecting, and that's falling into the bulk of how you answer that polling question, which is what I want us to get away from. I want us to create value. So research outside, look for things. I'll give you, this wasn't necessarily a LinkedIn, uh, occurrence, but it, it's very applicable. Let, let me explain. I, I, I had a client uh, last year, and she was she successful loan loan officer, and she was looking to connect with an, a top producing an agent. This was an agent that she knew for many many years, but never got any business from this agent. And they've had conversations. It just never really went anywhere. So long story short. We were in our conversation on our coaching call, and she had mentioned something that the agent had just got a dog. OK? 
Okay, and I, and I think my my loan officer also had just gotten a dog, and they had some kind of conversation about dogs or whether it was electronic or it was over the phone doesn't matter. But I said, I go, wait a minute, she just got a dog, and she said, yeah. I said, yes. She goes, yes. I go, what was the name and whatever the name was. I said, okay, this is your message, and I don't. You know, it does, this is my example. It could be sent through LinkedIn. It could be sent through an email. It could be sent through a text. It all depends upon how you're connected with someone. But basically, the message just said. You know, congratulations on getting, you know, what's his name? I have a bone that I want to bring to you for him or for her. Within minutes, within minutes, this agent responded and said, okay, let's meet. This was an agent that would not discuss business with the loan officer. They were more friends than they were business associates. And that one thing, when, when they made it personal, when they made it more emotional, what happened was they ended up meeting, they ended up, he ended up, she, I'm sorry, she ended up winning the agent in a relationship, and that agent had a whole team of buyer's brokers, buyer's agents. So it wasn't just about the agent, it was about building the team, but they made it personal because although they didn't do the research, we had a conversation. I'm telling you, if you do the research, you can find out things about people. And if you go on Facebook, you'll see pictures that they post. There's always something you can find out either from their website or from their personal social media profiles that will give you something to connect with them on LinkedIn. I hope that makes sense. And then you're going to be sending a personal message. Does this take a little bit of work? The answer is yes, it does. Is it hard to do? No, and in fact, everything that I'm going to give you going through this program today, nothing's hard. You just have to be willing to do the work. So I hope this is making sense. And again, just like with any other relationship, move it forward. So once you're connecting with them, you want to be able to ask them you know, just a couple of simple questions and talk about your position. So let's say you have a, I'm just making this up, a portfolio product. Okay, I, You say, okay, you know, Mr. Agent, Mrs. Agent, or Mr. Attorney, or whomever your target is, and you say, we happen to have this special program. This is what it does. Would this be a benefit to you? If they say yes, you then have something to move forward. If they don't say yes to that, then you find something else. It's about dialogue that moves it forward. This is about communication. It's about belly-to-belly -belly communication, and that's where it's more intimate. I can't stress it enough because the majority of top producers in this country are very good at the face-to-face, -face, personal, personal belly-to-belly -belly meetings. Okay. Number three, open houses. Okay, this is a big one because uh, realtors are complaining about loan officers coming to their open houses. They're complaining because most of the loan officers that come to an open house do horrible presentations. They mo most loan officers are coming from a place of, um, I'll call it desperation, because they're trying now to fill their purchase pipeline because they weren't do because they were focused on refis. So they approach sales from a very selfish perspective. And so when you go to an open house, you have to be prepared. You have to know what to talk about. So I'm going to give you some real quick tips on what you, how you work an open house, how you present it. One. What is your goal when you visit an, an agent in an open house? Your goal is very simple, to get them interested in something. Your goal is not to win a relationship at an open house. The environment is not the right environment. Okay? No agent is going to commit to doing business with you while you're at their open house. It just doesn't work. So your goal is to create interest about a future discussion. So what are different points of discussion? You can give them ideas on how to generate more leads and attendance at their open houses. Now, I've got such a short window of time here to really talk about ideas on how to do this, but there are many different ways to increase traffic at open houses, and most agents don't even know how to do them. Okay? Google it. Google how to you know, Google how, increase open house attendance, and you're going to find different things. Anything you want, you can find out there, or you can hire someone to help you get there. But it's all out there. So there are ways to generate more leads and attendance at open houses, especially using social media. 
You could even talk to them about discussing an open house as a listing marketing tool. I would you ask agents and say, look, you know, I don't want to disturb you at all. I was just curious. I know you're doing the open house because obviously you want to sell this home, but has anybody ever shown you how to turn an open house into a listing tool? And they're going to look at you like, or a way to get more listings, they're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? And here's, the, you know, here, here's a quick tip on how to do that. Teach the agents if they're going to do an open house from, let's say, 1 to 3, then from 3 to 4, have them do a neighbors only open house. And guess what? If you really want to help them, say, I'm going to help you market it. I will go door to door with you or for you and invite people the week before to the neighbors only open house. What does that do? It keeps the neighbors isolated because then they hopefully won't show up from one to three and they try to you know fly in under the radar and you know they don't want to be noticed and they don't want to be talkative when if they come in at three to four we know they're coming if they show up we know who they are they are neighbors and they're going to be far more op open to talk to the agent about housing so now the agent is building a brand with the neighborhood if you want to get really involved, you start working with agents where they start putting up these, um, I forgot the, the, what, what, what these are called, these, uh, these flags, these uh, banner flags, they get put in the front yard, okay? The weather's getting nice. I teach my real estate clients that what you want to do is partner up with someone and have a barbecue open house. So now that could be you, the smell of food. Everybody talks about cookies in the oven. Don't worry about cookies in the oven. Weather's getting nice. Barbecue out front. Offer people a hamburger or a hot dog or a soda before they walk into the house. See, the cookies are always in the house. If you use the smell of a barbecue before you get into the open house, just think about it for a second. Have you ever sat outside your house, you smell a barbecue two houses down and saying, damn, that just smells good. What are they having? Well, what happens here is when you smell a barbecue, what you're doing is two things. One, you are changing the emotional state of every single person who arrives at that open house. Two, you are part of the open house with the realtor. You're now creating tremendous value. And three, when you're doing the barbecue, when you're doing the invitations, when you're doing the banner flags, and you're really making the open house a special event, you remember those homeowners, that, the neighbors that were invited it from 3 to 4? Well, guess what? You're putting on a show for them from 1 to 3 or from 11 to 1. Whatever time your open house is, they're going to be watching. So you're putting on a performance with the agent. What are you doing? You're helping them win the neighborhood. This may sound corny. This may sound crazy, but it works. It works incredibly well when you do things a little bit different, okay? Offer support at the open house, which is everything I was just talking about, how to make it special. And then when you're talking, again, I jumped ahead because I told you how to do, make it a listing marketing tool, but this could be a discussion. Remember, the question to the realtor is just, has anybody ever shown you how to do an open house and generate listings from it? And they might be like, well, what are you talking about? Well, that's what you're scheduling for further discussion. Okay? This gives them a reason to want to meet with you afterwards. And you know what? You could go out on one Saturday, you could visit two, three, four, five open houses, have the same conversation, because not every agent is going to respond to you. Not every agent, when you look them up, are you even going to want to do business with them? The great thing is, and I always make this joke, we are blessed. We are blessed with an unlimited supply of real estate agents. All you have to be willing to do is go out and find the ones that you want to do business with and be just a little bit different. Hope this is making sense. I hope it's helpful. And I hope you're getting excited to realize that all of this costs little or nothing. Little or nothing. Number four, the referral matrix. If you have been sleeping now for the first 35 minutes of this program, you got to wake up right now. This is one of the most powerful concepts that I teach my clients, and it works like magic, the ones that do it. Okay? It, it's, it's simple, and it's incredibly impactful. 
It's called the referral matrix. What is the referral matrix? Well, very quickly, is I'm taking you beyond borrower, th borrower thinking. What does that mean? Most, most loan officers, what they're doing is they want to connect with people that can give them clients. And I get that, of course, because that's what's going to get you paid. You write loans, you get paid. But I want you to go beyond just thinking about the borrower. I want you to think about expanding your referral partner network, which can be much easier than you think. I'll, let me jump ahead for a second. When I do a live events and I'm talking about the referral matrix, I didn't make this a polling question here, so it'll be rhetorical, but I'll ask the audience, I'll say, and usually there's realtors in the audience too, and I, do, I train thousands of realtors just as I've trained many thousands of loan officers. And I ask realtors this question, I say, have you ever had a loan officer ask you to introduce you to other people in their office? And when I say that they asked you, I'm not questioning whether you voluntarily did it, I'm just asking the agents that they actually asked you for an introduction, and the number usually runs about 60%. So about 60% of the agents will say that a loan officer act that they do business with actually asked them for an introduction. So 60%, not a bad number. Then I go to the next question, I go, have you ever had a loan officer you do business with ask you for an introduction to an agent in another office, either an affiliated company or a non-affiliated company, and the number plummets from 60% to less than 15% every single time. Oftentimes, it's less than 10%. But I'll ask them, I go, Did you, you know, just, just think about that number. They ask yourself the question, have I ever asked someone that I'm doing business with to introduce me to an agent in another office? And then I go to the next level. I say, have you ever asked an agent to introduce you to an insurance agent or an attorney or an accountant or a financial planner? And the numbers always go, always go below 5%. And then I ask the agents the final question. I say, if you're working with someone, you like them and you trust them, and they asked you to introduce them to any one of these people that I just mentioned, would you do it? And the answer is always yes. If they like you, if they trust you, if they're doing business with you, they will gladly help you to grow your business. Oh, very, very important. When you're asking for this introduction, I'm sure you're getting the idea, the concept of this referral matrix. By the way, this referral matrix, you work the referral matrix, guaranteed this year you will earn an additional $100,000 in income. Guaranteed. Okay? Most of my clients increase their income by one hundred fifty dollars to $200,000 within two years just by doing this, and they just keep working it and working it and working it. It is so simple to do. You have to find, you know, you've got to tweak what you're going to say and how you present it, and there are specific strategies on how to do that, but just the concept can explode your business. But here's the thing. When you go to your existing relationship, so if you go to your existing realtor, don't ask them for a favor. Don't say, hey, could you do me a favor and introduce me? People hate to do favors. Don't, don't ask for favors. Say, I was wondering if you would help me. Just changing the word from favor to help completely changes the results that you'll get because people hate to do favors, but they often like to help. Okay, it sounds crazy, it sounds stupid, but one word difference will change your results dramatically. Think about what professionals in your sphere of influence do you have a strong relationship with? And ask them for an introduction or names to their sphere of professionals. Now here's what I'm talking about. Oh, and then of course you're gonna make the, the calls. You're gonna call the people that, they've in, they, that they say that you're going to introduce you to, because they don't even have to introduce you to them. You just got to know how to make that phone call to them, and then they will be responsive because you were referred to them. But here's how it works. Let's say you know an attorney. Ask an attorney if they know another attorney that's non-competing that they can introduce you to. Attorneys know realtors. And by the way, a referral from an attorney to a realtor is a very, very strong, very strong referral. Attorney might know an insurance agent. 
they might know an accountant, they might know a financial planner, they might know a contractor. I'm sure you're getting this. You know, a financial planner do the same. You might know multiple attorneys and this gets multiplied. You might know one attorney who knows multiples of each one of these. I know I'm kind of running out of time, and Carl, I apologize, I have a habit of always going just a couple minutes longer. I didn't tell you that ahead of time, but I hope you don't fire me. Um, that what happens is the people here, will, some of them will come over to here eventually, and then you just build it again, and build it again, and build it again. Very quickly to finish up this concept, here's where loan officers make mistakes with it. They do it, it starts working, and they stop. Now, I have my theories as to why they stop. One, because they've gotten busy, or two, because their brain says it can't be this simple to build my business. I've been struggling for 20 years, 10 years, five years on trying to build my referral business, and here comes Ron Weinberg out of nowhere to say this is how simple it is to do. Your brain actually can have trouble processing that because you're almost conditioned like it has to be harder than this. Your brain can actually work against you with this because if you don't fully believe in the power behind it and then when you execute it and you see it starting to happen very quickly, your brain starts to sabotage it if it's not willing to accept that this is how well this really works. My clients who work this and know exactly what to say and how to say it, their income explodes very, very, very quickly and they never have to make another cold call. I don't like making cold calls. Excuse me. So that's the referral matrix. And number five, very quickly, host-beneficiary relationship. What is this? Very quickly. A host is a partner who has a database which contains potential clients for you. So like attorneys, accountants, realtors, financial planners, insurance agents. I'm going to give you an example here for insurance agents because this is really the fastest way to gain purchase business from an insurance agent. So a host is a partner who has a database which contains potential clients for you. So what you're talking about is a marketing plan that will benefit both you and the host. So in this case, the insurance agent, the insurance broker. A marketing campaign, and I've given you an example of a letter or letters in your handout. Marketing campaign to the host database with a direct benefit to the host to increase their business and value. And here's the kicker. You're not driving people back to you. You're driving people back to the host. So, for example, here I have a letter. This is, you know, example insurance letter. It says, dear such and such insurance, you know, the, the, the insurance broker is writing it to their client. As your preferred insurance company, we believe that it's not only our job to help protect you with your cars, your homes, your apartments, we also believe that letting you know about opportunities to save money is also part of a service we provide. So what they do is they first give an update on the insurance, and then they talk about either homeowners or renters. And then they talk about whatever the topic is. This, you know, this is a little bit dated here where it says mortgage rates have hit the lowest point in the last 12 months. So if, I was, if you were my client and I was rewriting this letter for you, I would say because mortgage rates are about to change, you may want to explore, and if your insurance agent sending the letter to their apartment, to their renter database, you can bring people in. If they send it to their homeowner database, you can bring in potentially, I'm sorry, you can bring in purchasers. If they send it to their, re, their homeowner database, you might bring in a couple of purchasers, but you might still bring in some refis. But notice here, it says, whoop, on the bottom, we're not in the business of writing mortgages, however mentioned above, we're always looking for, for ways to save our clients money. We know a few incredibly professional loan officers and lenders in your area offer some lowest mortgage rates available. It'd be my pleasure to give you the contact information. What you're doing is you're having the insurance agent or the accountant or the attorney or the financial planner send this out to their database and they're bringing their clients back to them. Then they quarterback the referral to you. This way, you are not mentioned in the letter, so there's no question of you know any type of marketing violations or anything else. Wait, time out. I am not an attorney, accountant, financial planner, so that is my disclaimer. So I'm not making a representation on the legality of this, but everything I have looked at in relation to this, there's nothing that violates anything because you're not mentioned anywhere in the letter. 
but you're giving your clients, your referral partners, the opportunity and a reason to tap into their database, give them something of value to create value for their client base, and then in turn, it comes to you because you're the one that came to them with this idea. Works incredibly well. Now, here's what I will tell you. As I'm wrapping this up, we're gonna, I, and I, I know we, I'm sure we've had some questions coming in. I'm not seeing them on my dashboard, but I know Beverly might have some questions that have come in, which I want to take a couple of minutes to answer. But let me just finish this up real quick. Most loan officers will look at everything that I've just done here and say, wow, these are great ideas, but, and they're going to come up with the reason not to do it. The choice is yours, okay? Remen is very, very focused on helping you build your business, not just because they had me do this webinar. They do so many other things that they help their brokers and their loan officer clients or relationships in growing their business. But it has to start with you. It has to start with you making the decision that if I like an idea that was presented here today or another idea that you've heard about, how are you going to take it deeper? What do you need to do to master it? It won't take much, but mastering and implementing is where the money comes in. And I want you to start thinking about your business as a Parthenon. How many pillars do you have? How many pillars do you need? I can't answer that for you. So before we go to the questions, a couple of quick things here, and I'm really hoping that you enjoyed the presentation. And Carl, you know, I, I definitely welcome you to you know jump jump back on if you if you, if you can. Um, for any questions, that, if any questions come in your direction, but a couple quick things. One, this is very important. Remen, again, part of their commitment to helping you grow your business. We have put together a program, how to win the rate battle against your competition. This is a program that evolved from so many loan officers saying, I am tired of my borrowers leaving me for an eighth, or I think you know, they're, they're going to go with me and they're not loyal and they go with someone else and it's all because of rates or fees. I've created a program, How to Win the Rate Battle Against Your Competition. It's a live stream broadcast. It's, this is a webinar. A live stream broadcast is a full video presentation where we're going to have PowerPoints, you're going to see me speaking, we're going to have a flip chart. It's almost like you're coming to a live event, but it's going to be broadcast on the internet across the country. It's on Thursday, March 23rd. It's going to start at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It's 90 minutes, so it's an hour and a half. It's a full-on tra full training program for 90 minutes. You'll learn how to win the business over your competition, even if you don't have the lowest rate. You'll have, learn how to reduce and completely eliminate interest rate objections, stop prospects from shopping you against your competition, quickly develop a high-trust relationship with your prospect and client, overcome closing cost objections, and more. Now, here's the thing. Just to give you a quick insight to this, I'm asked the question always in coaching or events, how do you stop people from shopping you? Well, you can't stop them in the middle if you didn't do the right things when you started your presentation. So if you're going from point A to point B, if you do the right things at point A with your borrowers, you can virtually eliminate or greatly reduce all of the things that go wrong with them going someplace else in the middle. It's about how it starts and then how you make it proceed through the, through the transaction. And by the way, this doesn't just apply to borrowers. It's the same thing with realtor relationships. Okay? If you do the right things in your questions with realtors and how you do your presentation in the beginning, in, in, at point A, everything's easier later on. That's what this is going to be about. It's going to be 90 minutes. This is not a free program. It's normally $299 with the discount code of Remen. It's $199, but here's the thing. It's not $199 per person. It's $199 per location. We've been doing these live broadcast stream, uh, streaming events since last year, and what companies are doing is they're filling their conference rooms for $199, and they're having their whole team in their conference room watching this program invite you to find out more about the program. Winthebusiness.net will take you right to the landing page. It explains everything about the program. You can register there. 
if you are tired of losing your business to your competition for something as little as an eighth in a rate or $200 in a closing cost, then you want to be on this program. If you're a manager, you, want, you can even make a sales meeting out of this. Last two things, as far as Remen, they're a huge, huge supporter, huge advocate for the broker and loan officer community to help them build their business. If you want to find out more, if you're, not, if you're currently doing business with Remen and you're not getting everything out that you think you can, get a hold of your AE. If you're not doing business with Remen, you need to find out more about what they're doing and just reach out to them at Remen, marketing at Remen.com and one of their AEs or one of the executives is going to get right in touch with you and they're going to see exactly how they can serve you. The final thing is, if you want to find out more about how I can help you, Remen has sponsored me to do an introductory coaching session for anyone that wants a coaching session to help them in growing their business. All you've got to do is go to nmpucoaching.com, fill out the information, ask, answer a couple of questions, and I'll get back in touch with you and we'll schedule a time, we'll get on the phone, and we'll see how I can help you. Okay? Real simple. So I know I've gone over by a couple of minutes. I do apologize. I want to thank all of you for being on this program. We're going to be on for just a couple minutes more, answering a few questions. Beverly, are you there? I am. Okay. And just before, Beverly, did, did we get some questions that came in? Yes, we did. Okay. So I'll have you, you – we got time probably for, you know, three, four, five questions. But before we launch into those questions, I want to thank Remen for sponsoring this program. I want to thank all of you for attending this program. Uh, we had over 1,500 people registered for this program, so um, I don't know what the final tallies are on the show numbers, but I know they were very high when we got started, so I want to thank all of you for your time. And with that, what's our first question? Okay, the first question, should I only have five lead generators or more? Um, I did mention back in the... Um, in the uh, presentation, I can't tell you how many lead generators to have. It all depends upon what the makeup of your business is. For some people, two lead generators can be plenty. For some people, they need five. Do you have a team? How do you want to build your business? How many hours a week do you work in marketing? There are so many questions that need to be answered to figure out what is the right way for you to be building your business and how many you need to be consistent. Okay, we have a lot of people asking if they're going to be getting the PowerPoint presentation and the recording of this afterwards. So just wanted to clarify for them that they will be. Yep. And the, the presentation is actually also in the handout section on this webinar right now. So if you wanted to get it, you can get it there as well. Right. Uh, yeah, actually the, the handout though has all the fill-ins. But um, Beverly, I think we'll, we'll make this available. You, you'll be sending out a link within the next day or so to everybody to the recording, correct? Definitely, yes. By tomorrow, definitely. Perfect. Okay, good. Okay, next question. How do I approach people who I've been introduced to through the matrix? Um, how do I approach people I've introduced you to through the matrix? Well, it's more involved than what I'm going to give you, but I'm just going to give you at least the starting point of it. So for, for this example, if um, let's say I was told that I should be in touch with Beverly. Excuse me. So what I would do is I would, and let's say I didn't even get the formal introduction, I just got their name. I'd say, hi Beverly, my name is Ron Bainberg, I'm with ABC Mortgage Company. Joe Smith told me that I needed to speak with you and get a hold of you. Could I talk to you? Can you tell me when you might have a minute to speak? It could be as simple as that in an email or a message. Do not, and it, again, I can't go any further than this because of time, do not call up and leave this message. Do not call up and say, hi, Beverly, this is Ron Bamer from ABC Mortgage. Joe Smith told me that I should give you a call. I'm a mortgage loan officer, and I really wanted to find out about your business and to see how I might be able to help you. You will never, ever, ever get a phone call back. Tell people all they need to hear is, I was told that I needed to speak with you, wanted to find out when you have a quick minute, two minutes to speak, please give me a call back or shoot me an email, whatever it is. Don't give them the whole reason because then they have no reason to call you back. You've given them everything they need to screen the call and you don't want to do that. Great question. Okay. Here we got time I for two more. Time for, okay, two good. Or one more. Um, 
Two more or one more? Well, let's go with one. Let's see what the question is. <laughs> okay. Um, as a startup mortgage brokerage, what are some tips on creating wholesale lender relationships? As a startup mortgage brokerage. Hey, Carl, are you there? I am. I know you, I, Carl, Carl's there? He might be on yeah, mute. He's there. He yeah. is there. Carl. Can you hear me? Can hear you now. Great. I think that's a better question for you to answer than me. You want, Beverly, you want to repeat that question for me, please? Sure. As a startup mortgage brokerage, what are some tips on creating wholesale lender relationships? Well, the first thing is you want to sign up with multiple companies, right, to be able to get different um, uh, information, different contacts, and so forth. Uh, there's going to be different products that some companies are better at than others. For instance, right, right, with Remen, it's not only the FHA, MBA, and, and conventional and so forth, but we're specialists on renovation loans uh, and manufactured housing and so forth. So you do want to build relationships with different types of companies for different types of products. But I will tell you that the most important thing is the service aspect because when you're out there asking for those referrals and building that referral source, um, it is about the service you provide to get those loans closed quickly and that's how you, it gives you the opportunity to ask for that next loan, especially building a new business. So I, that, that's my suggestion. If you'd like, you can always reach out to me at cmarkman, M-A-R-K-M-A-N, at remen.com, and I'll be happy to make a phone call to you. We can talk about it. But that, that would be my suggestion is to, to build that, the, the base of lenders um, so that way you can move forward with your own business. And I, I don't think I could have even come close to giving that answer. So thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for bailing me out on that one. I, I know we've been on an hour, and Carl, I, I'll apologize. I always go over by a little bit. So I gave um, you thirty-five minutes, but I had I had on, on my calendar forty-five. So, but um, with that, um, I'm I want to say thank you for allowing me to present on behalf of Remen, and um, thank the audience for being part of this program today. I think they all took this, the first step, right, in learning about new ways of going out there and getting business, and I appreciate, Ron, you're a passionate guy, you're terrific, and in fact, we work together now, you're going to be helping me train my own account executives, so I appreciate you getting on here today with, I think there was over 1,500 people that registered for this, so it is a very, very important topic. Thank you. Thank you. Bev, thanks so much for uh, running all this for us, and um, we'll see everybody on the next one. All right, thanks everyone, have a great day. Take care Thank everybody, bye-bye.